What's up, everybody? We don't know if this is the one you've been waiting for, but it sure as fuck is the one I've been waiting for. We're going to talk about Michigan Mothman, or is this... You remember back in, I think it was 2017 or 18, when there was like a lot of talk of the, the Chicago Mothman? Yes, I remember that well. So that's where it started like really getting uh, widely reported, but... As a result of all the reports coming out in 2017, there were a lot of people all throughout Illinois that reported sightings that they had previous to the 2017-18, and I guess it's still ongoing too, but really when it picked up, there's things that go back all the way to the late 60s. Oh, wow. And um, this guy, uh, Tobias Wayland he started looking into this after he heard about a trio of sightings that occurred on the night of April 15th to the 16th between 10 o'clock at night and two in the morning in 2017. And after hearing about these sightings, he started investigating and uh, he was working with um, Lon Strickler from Phantoms and Monsters and they had been sharing a lot of data and uh, cross-interviewing witnesses. And uh, he also got some reports from the Illinois branch of MUFON and uh, this other site called, uh, I think it's UFO Clearinghouse. But he worked with all these different organizations and investigators to collect these stories of of what happened and... and, uh, it's a lot of these stories are very similar to the Mothman uh, sightings in, in Point Pleasant. And not everybody describes it as being Mothman, though, but but the, the general description is something that's dark gray to black with wings, typically with glowing eyes, and it produces uh, a strong sense of fear in people that witness it which is very similar to what was described by people that witnessed the Mothman. I I remember a a story from Point Pleasant of a woman who was carrying her baby, and she saw the Mothman, and it scared her so much she dropped her baby. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Mothman. Yeah, Mothman. You you contributed to that child's brain damage, maybe. Fucking dick. Yeah, that's a very interesting thing. And, of course, people will say that seeing something like that's going to generate fear. But these people note that it's a, a like a blanket of fear, something they walk into, something that overcomes them. Yeah, yeah. And and we've talked about it so many times on the show when we, with our own paranormal experiences, um, this, this sense of fear that you get. And it's, and it's not like, it's not like a fear like, you know, if, if you're arachnophobic and you see a spider, it's it's not like that. It's like a deep in your soul fear. Like, yeah. Like a, an inescapable sense of dread. Yep. And I got to say that it comes from nowhere, too. I, rem- I remember a few times of experiencing that. And uh, I mean, like full alert, like I, sh- like I should almost be running. But uh, like hair on my arms and my neck standing up, my ears are ringing. I'm looking around real quick and I'm kind of almost laughing. I'm like, holy shit. Like, I understand the emotions that I'm getting right now, but they just were not my own. They weren't from me. It was, it was like, like an oppressive sense of fear. Like I was like, what, there's nothing to be panicking about. Yeah. But but there, there's a sense of like literally almost flee for safety. And it's even worse when you get that before anything even happens. (laughs) Yeah. You just get that sense of fear and you're like, oh, fuck. And then something happens, and then you're really like, oh, fuck, no, nope, see ya. Yeah. And then, you know, and the the one time I experienced it the worst, I just 
ran out of my house in the middle of winter <laughs> with nothing but a t-shirt on. I'm like, nope, not going to deal with it. Fuck that. Couldn't do it. Whenever I get that sensation now, I just stop what I'm doing and go the opposite direction. Probably pretty solid. Yeah. I'm not dealing with none of that type of shit anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and if you're religious, you could always just say a quick prayer and, and you know, or, or a mantra. Usually something uplifting will help dispel that, but you're not always thinking clearly when you're when you're faced with that type of fear. It's a whole different thing when, when you're actually experiencing it, especially when you're not used to it. Like, I, I wasn't used to it. My my paranormal experiences have been few and far between. So like whenever I've experienced it, it's been like really fucking scary. Most definitely. And it kind of almost seems like a trap. Like these things that cause this weird alarm, this fear alarm that we always talk about it. I mean, traditionally they kind of feed off fear, don't they? So they just kind of have this natural, like, I don't know, pheromone release that causes fear and if you allow that fear to take over, it's just supper time for them, I guess. It's weird. It's kind of a, yeah. a rocky tightrope to walk before you let that overtake you in those situations. Right. And it, it's funny you say that because there's a few witnesses that that I'll be covering that actually had the idea that, that this thing was intentionally creating fear, with one of them even saying it seemed like it fed off the fear. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look at me call it. Yeah. Way to go. But but that's something we've we've talked about a, a bunch of times because it really how else can you explain that? You know? Like why why do they create this fear aura? And if it's something that if it's something that is going to be like trying to harm us or or um, wants to do damage or anything like in a lot of cases it it's fully possible for them to do it but they don't like nobody was attacked by the mothman even though the mothman was in close close proximity to some of the witnesses mm -hmm. no one was ever actually attacked and in these cases as well there's there's stories where it came really this thing came really close to people and it never attacked them, but people felt this fear aura. Wow. I wonder yeah. if that's something that's caused by these entities or animals or creatures, or is it a byproduct of them being there? Or is that like the sensation humans get when their dimensions breach nearby? Yeah, it's it, it could be it could be just like we're we're attributing this sense of fear to something that they're intentionally doing when it might just be like a byproduct of, of their appearance in our dimensional space. Right. And it's just like so foreign or so alien to us that our body is just like, whoa, no. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's what my body does. Whoa, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly yeah. what it does. Yeah. yeah. But I, I'm going to... In a separate episode, I'm going to cover the uh, the Chicago Mothman sightings. But this, in this episode, I, I did want to focus on the earlier sightings that occurred. Um, but really quick, I'm just going to go over the, the first three sightings that were reported in the 2017 wave of, of Mothman sightings. And these are the, the sightings that inspired... Tobias Weiland to really dig into this research. Um, but the, the first one the, was uh, reported by, or it was reported to MUFON, and it was reported by a woman who said um, that this, she witnessed this on April 15th at 10 p.m., and she said she saw what looked like a giant bat whose body was longer than six feet uh, while she was in a boat off of Montrose Beach in Lake Michigan. And she said the the bat was dark black and it had eyes that seemed to reflect light. And this bat circled around their boat three times and then it flew away into the night, disappearing in the darkness. And she said about five minutes after the initial sighting, they saw this bright green object that was slowly flying across the horizon. And after the object disappeared... Everyone that had witnessed it reported feeling an overwhelming sense of dread, and it caused them 
to feel so uneasy that they decided to bring the boat back to to dock and and get off the water completely. Whoa, there it is, huh? Yeah, right off right off the bat. Strangely, though, a half hour later, um, there was another report that was reported to MUFON, and this was a a man with his friends and his children. Um, He's of Mexican descent, and and I say that just because to to make sense of the way that he described it. Um, But he said that they were walking down the street in Chicago, and they were they were near um they weren't near the beach or anything they were they were in chicago um but he described this thing that he called la lechuza and are you familiar with that at all yes sir okay so for for those that aren't familiar it's uh basically like the, the skinwalker in mexican folklore um it's it's a witch or or a magic worker that is able to take the form of different animals, but most often it takes the form of an owl. And but Ooh, it's, it's, I wonder if that's a coincidence. It's got a lot of the same attributes that a skinwalker has, where they they tend to be evil, and they they will curse people and and you know stalk you, torment you, do all all that evil shit that skinwalkers are are said to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but with this sighting, the witnesses first heard the sound of wings flapping, and they saw this, what they described as being a large, dark owl. And the owl landed and stood on two feet in the middle of the road, and it just turned, and it looked at this guy and his kids. And he said once it had landed, he was able to, based on his height and how close they were, um... He, he was able to, to gauge that it was about six feet tall and it had glowing red eyes. And he said the, that him and his friends started yelling at this owl and eventually it flew away. And this sighting was six miles away from the location of that beach sighting. But it was a half hour later. Oh, wow, a half hour, just a half hour later. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, six miles distance, half hour later. And then the the final one that took place that night happened at two in the morning. Um, there was the the witness was arriving to work. He worked night shift, um, and he was arriving to work. And once he showed up, he saw a bunch of his coworkers outside looking up at the sky. So he looked up and he saw what he described as being a giant owl. And he said the owl eventually landed. And it looked at the the gathered group with these bright glowing eyes, and it stood. He said it stood taller than he was, and he's six feet tall. And he said that the owl stood there staring at him and his coworkers for a couple minutes, and it just it didn't make a move. It just stood there staring at them. And eventually, these guys all got this overwhelming sense of fear, and rather than than flee they they decided to start throwing things at this so they started picking up rocks from the the parking lot and throwing it at this giant owl until it flew away and once it flew away it made this screeching noise that they described as sounding like the noise of brakes on a truck after they've burned out whoa this is all in one night one night yeah now, where was this sighting in proximity this, to the others? Uh, I don't know how close it was, that, but this was also in Chicago. Okay. So all three of these were in Chicago. I don't know how close this particular, the, the last one was uh, to the beach sighting and the other one, but it was it was in the same city. But based on these, this is what, this is what started uh, Tobias down the path to looking into the uh into the the mothman or or flying humanoid sightings yeah i know that uh mothman got some misrepresentation <laughs> at the start of his career with birdman but uh yeah i mean that's what people 
were kind of describing and I, I the, the press went with that name and they, they did with Mothman as well. Do you think that we're misidentifying this thing? Do you think this isn't Mothman, but maybe Owlman? Well, the thing with Mothman, they originally wanted to call it Batman, but they couldn't because, you know, Batman, especially at the time, that that was like the, the height of the Adam West Batman live action series. So you can't call this thing Batman. And it, it wasn't necessarily because it looked like a moth, like it didn't have the the it didn't have bug eyes it didn't have the moth feelers it most people said it didn't even really have much much features at all other than having these big red eyes that seemed to be set into the trunk of its body like a blemier or something Mm -hmm. so the you know even the mothman description is is not necessarily um accurate to the sightings because it doesn't look like a giant mothman it just it has wings and it's vaguely humanoid in shape yeah i love that giant mothman statue that they have there but when they revealed it looks like it, fucking annihilus yeah it looks like annihilus but i mean just for as far as what people described i was like what it has butterfly wings for christ's sakes what did you do yeah and arms yeah and teeth and a, yeah a head yeah, like it looks nothing like the initial descriptions of the Mothman, but it's still a cool as shit statue, though. Yeah, oh yeah. But in, in looking into these cases, um, he found so many that, that took place in Illinois. Um, but there were also some in the surrounding areas, some in Indiana, some in Wisconsin. There, there was one in I'm going to focus on the ones in Illinois, but there was one that he found in Indiana that I found to be very interesting. So I do want to discuss this one. This one happened in 1969. So if we're if we want to make the argument that this is the same Mothman from Point Pleasant, then this was his westward journey. He he left Virginia and started heading northwest to and on his way to Illinois he stops in Indiana and <laughs> I don't necessarily think that's the case at all but he, he maybe it was I don't fucking know maybe this maybe there's a whole group of these things and and honestly based on some of the uh descriptions I'm going to be or some of the stories I'm going to be telling later it's very possible that that there's you know this is something that that's occurring all over the place it's not just one being but this particular case happened in october 1969 in rolling prairie indiana and a young boy named floyd hancock woke up to a strange noise and an unpleasant odor and he looks across his bedroom and in the darkness he sees this huge winged figure that was described as being at least eight feet tall that was crouching over his sister's bed and it had large leathery wings, well-defined muscular arms, but its face was almost skeletal and it had sharp teeth and dark eyes. Ugh. Floyd screamed for his parents, but uh, they did not show up. So he kept calling out, and his grandma ends up coming in. But as soon as she walked in the room, she fell to her knees, paralyzed by fear. And this creature came across the room, and it grabbed Floyd, and it dragged him out of the room past his grandmother, who was literally paralyzed, could not do anything. He was screaming for his grandma. This thing drags him out into the living room, there had previously been a storm and the storm damaged their roof so they just had like a tarp over the roof while they were waiting to get the the repairs done and uh, this thing must have come in through the roof because the the tarp had been moved and it dragged Floyd out past the past his grandma into the living room and took off with Floyd in its arms through the hole in the roof Oh and his shit. grandma said that she heard him screaming for help. She heard his screams fade away as the thing flew away. As soon as the, as soon as 
it left, his parents were able to move. Apparently what had happened was was that his parents were uh, put into a trance state and they were unable to react when he was calling out to them. And his grandmother was paralyzed by fear once she saw the creature. But after a few minutes of, of panic, they heard the scratching noise on the roof and then they heard a dull thud. And Floyd's father climbed up onto the roof and Floyd was laying there completely unharmed, but he was unconscious. And they, they brought him back to his bed, wrapped him in blankets, warmed him up, and he woke up and everything was fine. Man, I when you started that, I thought that this was like a shadow person story. I didn't think this was a flesh and bone being that was actually there. That's horrible. The leathery wings. So yeah. this is definitely not Mothman. Yeah, and, and dark eyes, not glowing eyes. Yeah. So this one is is more of what I would call a flying humanoid case. Um, and And the only similarity this has to the Mothman sightings is that it's a black figure with wings. A black humanoid figure. Mm-hmm. But the difference is, I, if you remember, most of the witnesses in Point Pleasant described that it didn't have arms that were separate from its wings. Correct, yeah. And this one had well-defined arms. But this was the only sighting of this specific thing in the area. This wasn't spotted by anybody else, but the story was corroborated by the grandma and both parents. Wow. As well as the the victim himself. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's a a creepy one. Yeah, that's really creepy. I mean, that was a kidnapping... Yeah, but then it brought him back for for what reason? Like, what was the reason it took him? And then and then he decided to bring him back and not just like drop him from the sky. He's like, oh, you know what? You're not, you're, you're not what I wanted. Yeah, I'm gonna get ri- risk getting shot and just drop him back on yeah. the roof. Yeah, but from there, I, I I only wanted to bring that up because it's it's a flying humanoid sighting and it's it's. It's on the fringe of of these sightings. Like most of these sightings are are your typical Mothman fare, but this is one of the earliest sightings outside of Point Pleasant, and uh, it's just I I thought it was an interesting story, so I wanted to include it, even though it's not in, in Illinois. But the first sighting I've got from Illinois is uh, a family that actually witnessed this being over the span of. Uh, a few years. Oh, wow. They lived in Chicago, um, and their apartment, I, I don't remember if it was an apartment or a house, it doesn't really matter, where they lived was across the street from a vacant warehouse on Racine Street in Chicago. So anyone who's from Chicago knows where Racine Street is. Maybe you know, I, I, I mean, shit, it was vacant warehouse, so maybe it's not even standing anywhere. Who knows? Anyway, irrelevant. At the time, vacant warehouse, it was there. And the family witnessed this thing multiple times on multiple occasions. And one of the family members who had reported all of this said that over the years, she had been able to see this thing take on different forms. So it's not, it's not just one thing. It appears as multiple different things. And one, it, she said its original form, or the, or the form that it defaults to, is the seven-foot creature with huge bat wings that has a goblin-like face and big ears, and it's dark brown, almost black, with red glowing eyes, and it has clawed hands and feet and arms that are separated from the wings, but it also has a tail. Whoa! Do you tell me there's a picture of this in the in that book? No, no, unfortunately oh. there isn't. But I mean, to me, that sounds like a gargoyle. It really does. The tail really threw it threw it over. Yeah, yeah, because that's not something you typically hear in the Mothman sightings or flying humanoids. Right. Another form that it can take is what's 
described as your typical mothman creature with arms attached to the wings it's about six feet tall black glowing eyes but that but the her description of this mothman the the typical mothman figure varies because she said in this form it also has long teeth whoa okay does he does it have a head or is this in the chest no no this is like your standard mothman so like your your blemier with the glowing eyes and the wings Ooh, okay but it can also take on the form of a giant bat that also has red glowing eyes and long sharp teeth and then its final form is a small goblin form that's gray or black in color, and it has wings but human hands. But in this form, it still has the red eyes, and it drools. Wow, dude. What the fuck is going on there? Yeah. That, to me, sounds like the... Remember in Gremlins when the... Or Gremlins 2, when the the gremlin mixed with the bat DNA? Yeah. Sounds like that to me. But she claimed that this thing would hide in the shadows and observe them, almost like it was stalking them. And it would release this strong, musty odor that smelled similar to moss or like the forest after a heavy rain. And it would make this loud screeching noise. And this this screeching noise, I, I mentioned it in the 2017 sighting, but this screeching noise is something that's very common to these sightings. And some people describe it as sounding like uh, like the brakes on a train. The, the last witness described it as sounding like a truck that had its brakes burned out. Um, but this, this loud screeching is, is a recurring theme with these sightings. But this, this particular witness also said that whenever it's sighted, it produces this fearful sensation in the witness. Wow. So again, we've got the... the that fear but it never it never attacked them it never harmed them it would just sit in the shadows and watch jeez can you imagine just stepping outside to take out the trash and smelling that smell and knowing what it is you've dealt with it for a year already yeah oh god and her description is pretty thorough i mean it sounds like she's been seeing it for a couple years yeah and uh her the other members of her family witnessed it as well They've witnessed it together and, and independently. My God. Okay, so, yeah, that's definitely not a moth, man. What do you What do you think we're dealing with there? I mean, if it's if I mean it's it's shape shifting. Yeah. Damn. But that could account for some of the differences in the sightings that were reported in Point Pleasant as well. Mm-hmm. Because you know, if this is a creature that's capable of shape shifting, then it could you know maybe maybe it. Indrid Cold is a shapeshifter, and maybe he was re- behind it all along. Oh, yeah, maybe it was like one of the Mothmen doing their best to shapeshift into a person. Yeah, and that's why he had the weird creepy smile. Yeah, the weird tan. Yeah, yeah. They're just like, yes, this this is what human man looks like. <laughs> I just forgot to talk with its mouth. Yeah. <laughs> but there, there's... I, I've got another story that happened um also in chicago that that displays the uh the fear and and how intense it is but this is one where um someone was kind of attacked i wouldn't say exactly attacked this one but this one reminded me a lot of the initial point pleasant sighting so have you ever heard of the author nefer kepri it sounds familiar, but I can't she's, say that I, I have. I think she's like a like a spiritualist self help writer. Then no. <laughs> yeah. Well, she she had a story um, that her dad had told to her. Um, her dad used to work nights at Victory Memorial Hospital in Chicago, and uh, after his shift ended in the the early morning hours before dawn. Um, one of his friends told him he needed help because his car was dead and he needed a jump. So he made arrangements to meet his friend at a nearby restaurant that was located close to Lake Michigan. And uh, he was connecting the jumper cables. And as he was attaching the cables to his car, he got this weird feeling. 
And he said it just, it was this feeling like he was being watched. And then from that feeling, he got this overwhelming sense of fear that just like flooded over him. And this fear led him to look up. And when he looked up, he saw this dark figure with glowing red eyes in a crouching position on top of this nearby silo or, or tower or something. He said he wasn't sure. It was either a tower or a silo. Um, but it was cr crouched on top of this, looking down at him with these red glowing eyes. And as soon as he saw it looking at him, the fear ramped up even further. And both men got into his car and left the scene, not even bothering to lock up his friend's car or unattached the, the jumper cables. They just left everything there and, and drove off. And as they were driving off, they heard this loud swooshing sound like, like some, you know, like I, I would assume like you'd hear in a movie or something with something like whoosh, you know, something like that. Uh, but he heard this, this sound and then he heard something hit the top of his roof and it sounded like it slid across the roof of his car. And once he got home, he took a look at the top of the car and there were four sets of three claw marks and each individual claw mark was about a quarter inch from the next one. Wow. Okay. So now we've got much like the lizard man, some physical evidence. Yeah. Car damage evidence to be more yeah. specific. Wow. Okay. Right. And again, I mean, this thing didn't really do anything to them but it all of a sudden this over and and he felt the fear before he even saw this thing man now i gotta say when we talk about our holy shit alarm going off it's been when we've had experiences with what we would call ghosts now if, if every single case that you've talked about has this holy shit alarm factor in it do you think that when we've experienced that, we're seeing something that's fucking not a ghost? Well, I, I've i said many times that I'm I'm not convinced that ghosts are ghosts in the, in the traditional sense. Like, I don't think that they're dead people that can't leave. I think there's more to it than that. And I think a lot of it has to do with, I mean, look at look at cases of hauntings. And then look at cases of people that are plagued by uh, what they what they call alien contact. And then look at cases where people say that they're interacting with with fairies or nature spirits or you know some something along those lines, elementals. Um, and all the cases are are very similar. You could literally line them up and see all the similarities. With only with the differences being the appearances that these things take, that's that's really the only difference. So I I I think that it's I I'm hesitant to say it's all the same thing, but I think it's coming like I think it's the same type of thing, right? You know, like coming from the same place or or coming to our reality or dimensional space in the same way. And maybe they all want the same thing. Maybe they all feed off negative energy. Or maybe that's just what we feel when they show up because it just feels so alien to us. Like it, it, our body's like, no, this isn't right. It feels wrong in some way. This is not natural. Right. Just like a, like liter a literally a physical sensation that happens as spider sense in a way. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. Spider sense. Yeah. Something from something like other unnatural not from from where we are i guess that's a good way to put it but it's weird because i've had experiences with ghosts and not get that sensation i wonder what that means yeah it's it's got to be something to do with their their appearance though i i don't you know, because it, it's almost like they're being heralded you know like you're you you are afraid but why am i afraid because fucking mothman is here <laughs> oh my god mothman yeah. But I, I've got a story from 1981 where um, it's it's kind of almost reverse, um, where in this case it was someone who had been dealing with a lot of negative shit in their life that felt that 
the being sought him out because of the negativity rather than came and created this negative feeling. Ooh. Um, so this happened in Cicero, which is six miles from Chicago. And it was a 13-year-old boy who had been the, the victim of abuse. And he would often use meditation as a way to, uh, you know, a, as a means of escape, I guess, just as a way to kind of uh, ground him and, and make it so he's not dwelling on the, the negative that comes with being abused. Way to go, buddy. But one night in the summer of 1981, he went out to his backyard to meditate. And he was in this meditative state, but he said all of a sudden he got pulled out suddenly and had this these alarms going off like he was being watched. So he opens his eyes and looks across his yard and into his neighbor's yard. And standing next to his neighbor's garage, he observed the seven-foot-tall, dark black figure that was watching him. And the being was humanoid in shape. It had huge black wings that were folded against its back. It had a long, thin head and glowing red eyes. A long, thin head? Yeah. Huh. He said that this thing reached out to him psychically. Um, and he said they had this psychic interaction, and but it wasn't so much uh, an exchange of information. He said it was more like an acknowledgement that they were both together and sharing this moment. You know, kind of like a like a hey, look at me, I'm here, you're here, you're supposed to be seeing me, like that sort of thing is is what he what he got. Um, but he felt after this interaction that the being sought him out because of the abuse that he had been suffering. And he didn't feel like it was necessarily a negative entity, but he said that he felt that it was drawn to the negativity that was in his life. Hmm. But this was the only sighting he had of it, but that was the impression he got after they, they had that connection. So in a case like that, it's, it could be that it's feeding off of this, negative energy and that's why it creates the fear aura because that's the easiest negative emotion to create uh, but this kid didn't need to be scared he was already he had a, already had enough suffering in his life and maybe this thing was just drawn to that like like a excuse the the comparison but like a moth to flame mm -hmm. Maybe it like recharged its fear powers off that little kid's sorrow or whatever. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe it just needed a snack and it's like, let me let me just pop in real real quick here and I'll <laughs> mm. <laughs> Saw the kid, gave him a little bear grills nod and Yeah. Made a psychic like, Thanks, link. man. Sustenance. Yep. Easiest meal I've had in weeks. Wow. Yeah, seven feet tall, though, dude. Seven feet tall. Yeah, and and it's weird because he doesn't. The in this particular instance, this witness does not describe feeling any sort of uh, fear. Hmm. But I've I've got another case that actually spanned decades. the The last time this the witness saw this thing was 2019, but. His first sighting was 1987, and he describes it. He, sa he said every encounter he's had with it has been accompanied by this sense of, of fear. But he's seen it so many times now that he doesn't, like, when he gets this feeling, it, it doesn't, it's not the same as it used to be. That kind of leads me to a question I have for you, Mike. We, we talked tonight about a few times about experiencing that ourselves. Are you yeah. are you able to uh, recognize that and not not necessarily control it? Maybe I mean even if you can, that's cool. But are, are you able to to recognize when it's that alarm? Yeah, I like I can recognize it. I, I it's happened so infrequently that it's not. It's definitely not anything I have any control over. Um, it's just one of those primal feelings that that occur, but. Um, it's it's different than a regular fear. It's it's not like you know, like for instance, I'm afraid of heights, and if if I get if I'm really high up and I get to the edge and look over, 
Like I, I feel dizzy and, and queasy and I'm like, it, it's a, a fear thing, but it's, it's more like a, like almost an anxiety than an actual like primal fear. Right. Um, but when, whenever I've had that experience, it's like soul deep fear. Like there's no escaping it. It, it, it's almost like, I don't, it's so hard to describe unless you've experienced it, but it, it's just like this, this fear that just grips you completely. And, and I could see how some people could get paralyzed by that fear. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I always described it as an unreasonable about amount of fear. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good way to put it. Sorry to cut into your story. I, I would think of it like, uh, I I mean honestly I I really can't think of any way to describe it other than what we've already done like you you if you've experienced it you know exactly what I'm talking about if you've not experienced it I really can't describe it any better than I've already done it. Yeah. so I'm sorry but just be thankful you haven't experienced it because it's fucking terrifying if you've ex- experienced it uh drop us an email let us let us know about your experience yeah yeah I'd, I'd like to hear about that. So th- this guy, he he's had co- encounters that span, like I said, from 1987 to 2019. But his first, I'll, I'll just describe his first encounter. He was walking along back roads at night, and these particular roads, he, he lived in, I, I didn't catch where exactly he lived, but it was in the rural farmlands area of Illinois. And he was out for a walk at night, And uh, he had this unsettling feeling that he was being watched and he heard a rustle in the cornfield. And he started to jog because that freaked him out when he saw this black figure with glowing red eyes fly out of the cornfield and across his path. And once he saw this thing and looked at its eyes, he was overcome even further by this fear and just started sprinting and just took off as fast as he could. And as he was running, this thing let out a loud screech and flew away. God, it it seems to let out that screech when people are on the retreat to like, I don't know, it's kind of like a keep running signal. (laughs) Or a, hey, where are you going? (laughs) Come back. I just want to make out. But he saw this thing, he said probably around a dozen times. um, But every time he sees it, he experiences the fear. But he says he doesn't believe that it's evil, but he gets the feeling that it feeds off of this fear. Wow. Okay. It seems like uh, towards the end of the 80s and into the 90s, it kind of died down. At least in people didn't report sightings during that period. Uh, But in 1997, a 15-year-old girl was asked to go grab something from her mom's car between 9 and 10 at night. So she went outside, goes to the car, and she hears this whooshing noise. She looks up, and as she's looking up to see what it was, the street light across the street from her house goes out. So she looks at the light, and she noticed what she described as this gargoyle-like figure that was crouching on top of the light post. And it was all black, had large wings and glowing red eyes. And she said she saw these small protrusions from coming from the top of its head. Like in my mind, I picture either like, like the ears on the Batman suit or like the small horns on daredevil's helmet, Mm -hmm. you know, something like that. I think I like boars knots or something like that. Some type of formations. Yeah. But, uh, she sees this thing and instantly becomes overwhelmed with fear runs back into her house, runs into her room, and hides in her room when she hears the rushing sound of wings outside of her window. So then she draws her blinds and turns the lights on and goes to sleep. And that was her encounter. But she felt the the fear again and ran away. Jeez, man. This, this, I mean, with Mothman and Point Pleasant, we heard, we know that it, followed the the youngsters in their car and they were chase it was chasing them and its wings flapped alongside the car it didn't yep. leave any scratches so 
Apparently, I mean, I guess we can say that's not an attack. I don't know if Mothman's feet had claws, so I don't know if he could have scratched up their car. But this thing seems to be completely unafraid of of people, period. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it's, it's a, unafraid of them, but it's causing the fear. And I, I've got another I, another one where where the witnesses said that it seemed like it was deliberately trying to scare them. This this happened in 1999. Um, there was a young couple that were seniors in high school that snuck out late at night to take a drive and quote unquote smoke cigarettes without getting caught by mom and dad. But we were all in high school taking late night drives with with our significant others. We know we know what shenanigans were going on. Late night ping pong tournaments. Yeah, yeah. A, a rollicking game of Parcheesi. But since they were smoking in the car, they had their windows down. And uh, they're just kind of cruising along. They're not in the back roads. They're in a, they're in a suburb of, of Chicago called uh, Napperville. And they were driving down the streets. They had the windows down. And they heard this loud screeching noise again so they slowed the car down so that they didn't hear you know so that the car's engine was quieter and we're listening again and out of nowhere this flying figure flew in front of their car which caused caused them to slam on the brakes and then this thing it stopped in front of the car and it bulged its eyes out like or the the witness described it as as bulging its eyes i i don't know exactly what that means but it bulged its eyes and it made a snarling gesture with with one clawed hand in its mouth um and then it flew straight up into the air and out of sight and she said the figure itself had wings glowing eyes and dark purple skin that seemed almost transparent whoa and it was four feet long but she said when it stopped in front of the car and and bulged its eyes and made the snarling gesture she got the impression that it was deliberately trying to scare them not not that it was trying to harm them but that it was deliberately trying to scare them before it flew off Hmm. wow this this is all this is all one different type of entity. I wouldn't be calling this Mothman at all. This is the fierce sucker of Chicago, dude. Yeah. Yeah, and there's there's this place, it's it's about 75 miles from Chicago called Rockford. And there've been a bunch of sightings there. So over the years um one of the first ones was in summer of 99, um, there were a group of friends that were sitting outside on their front porch when they saw this dark gray flying humanoid figure fly between the trees across the street from their house. And this this one is really weird. This is different. This one, it, it could maybe even be a completely different thing, but this, it sounds like one of those wacky one-off things just just based on their description. But they said the figure had muscular legs and muscular arms that were attached to bat-like wings. And it had glowing eyes and what looked like small cat ears on its head. And they said as it was flying, it seemed to be flying in slow motion. But it was kicking its legs while it flew, almost like it was swimming. (laughs) And then it flew between these two pine trees and they lost sight of it and couldn't see it again. So there's no fear there, but uh, this was the first sighting in Rockford of a flying humanoid. But a few years later in 2004, witnesses that were outside stargazing um, were alerted by the sound of their neighbor's dogs barking. And as she uh, brought her gaze down from the sky to, to look and see what they were barking at. She saw this, what what she perceived to be a seven foot tall humanoid figure with bat wings flying through this park that bordered her backyard. And as she was watching, 
she saw the thing descend from tree level to about five to six feet off the ground. And then it flew between two houses next, next door. So to see if she could catch it flying from the other side, she ran out the front yard to see if it, but, um, she didn't see it, but she heard this loud screeching noise coming from the tree line at the park. So she ran back in the house, locked the doors, and she told her husband what was going on. They sat there and they listened to this, these screeching noises coming from the tree line for another five minutes before they went silent. Oh, God. And the following day, her neighbor called her over because he had damage to a fence in his yard. So she took a look and, and uh, it was a chain link fence and a section of the fence was completely bent at a 45 degree angle. Just pushed over? Yeah. Wow. Hmm. And then I've got two other ones that happen and these ones are it sounds like it's almost the exact same story but it happened to two different groups of, of teenage kids in the same summer in 2010. Um. These both of these sightings were on the back roads near Rockford, so it wasn't in Rockford proper. Um, but they the sightings were ten miles apart from each other, um, but the similar similar area, um, both uh, gravel roads surrounded on both sides by cornfields. Uh, so the first witness. Uh, the first witnesses were two 16-year-old boys that were driving around being stupid teenagers on country back roads. Um, the driver owned a uh, old 97 Firebird, and uh, they, because it was you know a, a muscle car, they're they're out on back roads, going fast, doing stupid shit. And at one point, they attempted to to drift and get their car to go sideways on a gravel road that has cornfields on both sides and they're going really fast trying to get it to so that you know slam on the brake and turn you do whatever you do to make it drift i don't fucking know i i, I don't do that shit but <laughs> we, we've we've all seen it done in movies uh so they're trying to do that and uh this is late summer so at this point the corn is almost at its peak height you know probably around six seven feet tall um, and they were drawn to this sudden movement in the cornfield and the corn started violently shaking in this one section. So thinking that a group of deer were going to be jumping out of the corn and into the road, they slowed down almost to a stop. And at the point, you know, they're, they're seeing the corn move closer and closer to the road. And at the point where they think the deer is going to be coming out, all of a sudden, this huge black figure, they said it was about the size of a, of a large buck, but it was humanoid in shape and it had wings. And it flew out of the cornfield and into the middle of the road, about six feet in front of their car. It made this zigzag pattern in the air and then flew straight up as if it was shot out of a cannon. And as soon as it shot up, they both, they, they just gunned it in the car. And uh, they didn't see it, but they got the feeling that it was following them. In the other story, almost completely identical. Only the difference is, like I said, it was 10, 10 miles away. And this was a this was two 17-year-olds who were on, in their senior year of high school uh, or going into their senior year of high school. Uh, it was late summer, early fall. Um, but they were driving around. They these guys weren't being assholes with their car. They're just taking a late night drive, probably getting high on back roads like you do in the country. Um, I, I used to do that all the time when I was <laughs> I was a kid. You can't, you can't get high around your parents, so you just fucking hop in a car, go cruise around back roads, listen to music, and smoke bowls. And I'm sure that's what these kids were doing, even though they didn't admit to it. I know that's what you're doing, you little fuckers. <laughs> Goddamn delinquents. Well, I mean, that's one thing I love about reports like this, is that these kids were probably doing something they weren't supposed to be doing in the eyes of the law, and uh, still came across this and still reported it. I mean, I'm sure if we interviewed these kids, they, they would say they were fucking smoking bowl after bowl, driving around, doing nothing. Yeah. 
I I mean, I'll in, in a second I'll tell you about a weird story that I had on a back road. But these kids, they they had uh, they had the same experience. They saw the corn shaking. Um, but in this case, it was a, a dark black humanoid figure. But instead of flying out, it actually stepped out of the corn and into the road, and then it got in the road. And it was illuminated by their headlights. And they said it it had this, it had a sheen to it, almost like wet tar. So they started calling it the flying tar man. Because once it got into the road and their headlights were on it, it jumped up and it spread its wings, which they said were probably 15 feet, a 15 foot wingspan, flapped them once, was in the air and gone. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, and and it's crazy because it was pretty much the same experience, and it happened around the same period of time, just ten miles apart, but s- similar areas and similar experience. It's weird, right? It seems like this thing's being d- disturbed by the cars, and it knows yeah. it's a car that, that's coming. Yeah. So I had this weird. I I can't remember if I've told this story before on the show. Um. But for for anyone who might be a new listener or has not been aware of where I live, uh, I live in upstate New York, uh, which gets very cold in the winter and we get lots of snow. And most of our bird species migrate south. Um, We do have some that overwinter like sparrows and uh, crows, blue jays, things like that. But... Um, nothing, nothing that would account for this. Um, so we're, we're driving around, like I said, nothing to do up here. And when, when you live, when you live in the sticks and, uh, so we're, we're just driving around, killing time, listening to music, um, likely smoking bowls. (laughs) And, uh, we were on this back road. And as we're driving out of a snowbank, there's this thing that just flies out and goes straight up into the air. And it had wings. It wasn't big. I would say it was maybe two to three feet tall. And it just shot out of the snowbank, flew straight up into the air. It didn't fly across the road, didn't flutter, literally straight up into the air. And we're like, oh, that's what the fuck was that? That was really fucking weird. Um, f- probably 10, 15 minutes later, we're coming down the same stretch of road, just in the opposite direction. When we hit that spot again, this thing again flies out of the same spot straight up into the air. It, and it didn't look like it was even flapping its wings. Like it looked like its wings were outstretched and it just flew straight up into the air. Well, no, you've never told us that story before, and that's that's. Was it in the snowbank, or do you think it's something that was? I don't know, on? like because it was. It was like once our once the the headlights illuminated the area is when it flew up. So I don't know if it was like in the snowbank or on the snowbank, but I can tell you right now, we have we have birds that are ground nesting birds, uh, like quail or pheasant that that live in New York, um, but. They're not going to nest in a snowbank. Um, on the side of the road. On the side of the road, right. And this thing was gray in color. Quail and pheasants are brown, with you know, and they've got uh, like green and bluish colors mixed in. Not that I'd be able to distinguish that in a car, but this thing was 100% gray, not brown. Cause it was like a pale gray. And if you startle one of these, it's, it's not going to shoot straight up into the air for one. And it's going to be flapping its wings. This thing did not <laughs> flap its wings. It's just wings were outstretched and it just shot straight up into the air. It's just green goblin right out of the snow. Yeah. It's fucking weird. <laughs> and like, I couldn't distinguish any other features other than it had wings, but it wasn't flapping the wings. And you said so fucking weird. And you said it was about three, two, three feet long. I guess. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. You know, like it would be a a, a large bird if it was a bird. That is but, weird. 
I've never seen anything like it before or since, and nothing that's native to this area that I'm aware of anyway would would account for for what that was. I mean, it, I I guess it could be a bird, but again, it wasn't flapping its wings. It just shot straight up. <laughs> That's, like a fucking rocket. It's hilarious to me. For some reason, when I picture that in my head, it's just going <laughs> straight up into the sky. Yeah, th- and that's exactly what it did. It just flew straight up out of sight, and that was it. And then when we came back, did it again. Wow. And you, you've probably driven that same road a billion times, and you never saw it again, huh? Yeah, no, never saw any. And, I mean, I've I've... This was, uh, let's see, I was maybe 19 when this happened, 18, 19. And um, at that point in time, I I used to drive the back roads all the fucking time because there wasn't very much else to do. And if we were bored on a Friday night, we'd, you know, just throw some music on and just go for a ride. As a pastime, I used to deliberately drive out to back roads and get lost just so, you know, just to kill time. And then I would find my way back home. <laughs> and and it, this was the days before GPS on your cell. You know, there were, there were no, I don't even think I had a cell phone at that point. And if I did, it was an old shitty fucking Nokia brick phone. You know, I'm not getting GPS on there. Wow. So I would just drive out to the middle of nowhere, get lost, and then find my way back. And I'd never seen anything other than like deer or a fox. Hmm. So I don't know what the hell that thing was. That's definitely weird. You got to report it. <laughs> I've I've got a few more cases. Um, we're running kind of kind of long on time, so I'm going to cut some cases out. But I've got three cases that I think are particularly strange. That that um, it, it's not your regular type of story here. Um, one of them happened in in 2000 in Goshen, Illinois, which is 50 miles from Chicago. There were two witnesses that decided they were going to go for a nighttime walk um, out to this local dam that's uh, near this, or that's off of this lake. And to get to the dam, you have to go down this path that goes past the lake, or past the lake, and leads directly to the dam. So they go down the path, they arrive at the dam, and once they get to the dam, they hear this loud commotion down by the water's edge below them. It sounds like rocks are being moved and, you know, like kind of like a a small avalanche of rocks. And following that commotion, they hear this loud this loud whooshing noise and one of the witnesses described it as sounding like a pterodactyl from Jurassic Park (laughs) but they said it flew so close to them that they were actually able to feel the wind from its wings as it flew past them oh shit but because it was nighttime they didn't have any lights they could only make out this dark shape that flew past them and flew to the edge of the dam on the other side Within moments of this thing flying past them, they heard this rustling noise in the woods nearby, following followed by the sound of a gunshot. And after hearing this gun being fired, they ran off, but they heard this crash on the other side of the dam, like something heavy landed. And then they, they just took off from there. They didn't hear any other reports from it. They didn't hear or see anything else from this creature, whatever it was, or hear any reports of gunfire where there shouldn't be. Um, But I want to know, one, obviously, what the fuck that thing was. But two, why was somebody waiting in the dark with a gun to shoot at this thing? Like, did they know it was there? Is this thing like an escape creature from the SCP Foundation and it's being hunted down by agents? What the fuck is going on? Yeah, it was like Rainer, the gargoyle hunter, hiding in the woods, tracking that thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. And from what they can tell with sound, they hit it and it dropped, possibly. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I I mean that's that's just a weird one because of the the whole like if it wasn't for the the gunshot thing, 
like I, it would kind of be an unremarkable case because they didn't really see anything other than a black shape and f hear and feel the, the rush of wind from the wings. But the gunshot, man, what the fuck? Dude, what if that was some totally freaked out guard for the area that just got clearance that night? They're just like, shoot it then, dude. If you're seeing yeah. this thing, shoot it. Right, right. It's just, it's so weird because, I mean, hunters don't typically go out hunting at night. And the, if if there was a hunter out there, what the, what were they expecting? Yeah. And it was also in the middle of summer, and I don't think there's any hunting seasons in the middle of summer. I could be wrong. But I don't believe that there is. Hmm. So I, I have no idea. It's fucking crazy. Another one I want to talk about is a daytime sighting. You don't really hear too many of those. I think there were a few daytime sightings in Point Pleasant, though, weren't they? Yes. So this one happened between 4 and 5 in the afternoon. Uh, it was in the fall. Uh, so around this time the sun would have been starting to set. And these kids were, it was after school, they were walking home, and they saw that this weird, what what they first thought was a weird guy that was dressed in a black trench coat. But it looked like he had a head that was just sitting on his shoulders with no neck. And he was just standing there. So they they were kind of they were keeping an eye on him because you know it's fucking weird like what the hell are you doing guy? <laughs> but uh, as they approached, all of a sudden he spreads his arms, which were actually wings, and it wasn't a fucking trench coat; it was wings wrapped around him. It flapped one time, and that's all it took to send it up into the sky where it just flew away. One single flap of its wings. And it flew off in the direction of the sun, so they lost sight of it because the, the light from the setting sun obscured their vision. That's fucking crazy in broad but daylight. Broad daylight. Hmm. Yeah. Um, the last one I've got, I wanted to share. This is not, this doesn't take place in Illinois. This one actually took place in Wyoming. Um, and it's very different. And that's, that's why I wanted to, to go over this because it's not your typical. Mothman sighting. Um, but this this couple and their daughter were, were moving um, and they were in the car and I can't remember exactly where in Wyoming, but um, they were they were driving to their new their new home. The daughter was asleep in the back seat and the father was driving, mother in the passenger seat. And all of a sudden out of the woods comes this flying pale gray humanoid figure that had these bat wings and she said it flew up along the side of the car and was doing like a side stroke flying so like think it like its body was turned so its chest would be facing the car right and it's just kind of flapping alongside the car keeping pace with the car but sideways instead of like you know like it's racing it's like it's leisurely swimming next to the car or something john ramita jr vulture pose but she said that it looked in the car and it had these pale milky eyes Ugh. that like like she said it looked like what, what she would think of like a blind person's eyes would look like and it just flew alongside the car before eventually taking off and they lost sight of it completely. But I, the only reason I bring that up is because it's another type of flying humanoid and it's outside of the area. It, it still had the fear, like they, they experienced the fear of it, um, but it never attacked them when, again, it, it clearly could have at any point in time attacked the vehicle if it wanted. Right. But it just flew alongside the vehicle, looked in at them, made contact with its pale milky eyes <laughs> and then flew off. Yeah, every single one of these cases, these things want to be seen. They make themselves known. Yeah, it's that's really what it seems like and it and it seemed that way with a lot of these Mothman sightings. Mhm. Mm like the the one where the Mothman was peeking in people's windows. Like just imagine how fucking scary that would be, dude. Like just this black thing with huge glowing red eyes 
trying to look through your window while you're fucking hiding. Ugh. Stuff horror movies are made of, man. Yeah, it makes me think of that alien footage that dude had where it was looking through his window. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, the the pedo guy? Yeah, what was his name? We forgot his name, and I'm glad we uh, did. Yeah, I, I can't remember it, but... We'll just call him I, pedo He's guy. not worth mentioning. Yeah. You can, you can find our episode covering his documentary somewhere in the archives but i i cannot remember was it romanek was that his last name yeah you got it actually was it stan romanek that's it all right i said his name damn the man (laughs) dude was a pedo claimed that uh he was being set up for his contact with aliens but i i don't know about that one didn't he take a plea though I don't remember how that all played out, but his, I always thought that his footage was bullshit yeah. and like just, yeah, that, that guy is, that guy's a piece of shit. <laughs> I got to ask you with these cases here, I mean, they're all authentically terrifying. They're all, I mean, of something similar, but in a lot of cases of, of clearly different things. Hooey, uh... I don't know, with such a history, man, dating back to the 60s, how long do you think this happened to where people just started reporting it to add to the craze? Or do you think that this happened? I mean, your stories are pretty well spaced out there. Well, in in most of these cases, not all of them, but in most of these cases, there was the initial report, and then they were interviewed by either a MUFON investigator, Lon Strickler himself, Tobias Weiland himself or someone from the UFO clearinghouse. Wow. Um, a lot of these cases where they were able to talk to the witness, uh, Tobias himself would go and interview people that had already been interviewed by other investigators. And then they would compare notes. And so the, the ones that were cross-referenced, those ones all seem to hold up. Like, it doesn't seem like these are just some fucking weirdos. And and honestly, when it comes to, to things like this, um, the amount of effort that goes into reporting these, especially if you're doing it anonymously, like, I, I can't see the point in creating a fake story for no reason. You know, there's nothing to gain from it, really. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you could say there may be a bored teenager here and there, but with the amount of sightings that that are showing up, um, I don't think you can attribute all that to bored teenagers. And especially over such a, a large time frame, a lot of these reports didn't come out until after the popularity of the, or I should say, um, the widespread reporting on the the 2017 sightings. Um, I I would think that if people were trying to jump on the bandwagon, they would just be like, oh yeah, I saw it too last week over, it was sitting at the the movie theater and and, uh, stole my popcorn. (laughs) But uh, these are, are, most of the people that are reporting these old cases are saying the only reason they're reporting it is because of the recent sightings. And they're reporting it because they thought that maybe it could be connected in some way. Wow. That's fascinating, dude. I, I got to tell everybody that uh, we knew this was going to be a two-parter, but <laughs> Mike had five pages of notes for tonight, and this was one. So uh, it might be a... I actually, I ended up getting through two and a half. Ooh, there you go. Okay, well, yeah, still. Yeah. So... um. Yeah, I had a lot of notes on this, but uh, a lot of a lot of this stuff is just it's repeating. You know, it, it's they're all similar sightings where they see it's all really brief. Um, they just they hear the rush of wings, they see a figure, they're terrified. Sighting is over. They go on living their life, um, with only the two exceptions where the people saw saw this being over a span of years, uh, typically these are just a one-and-done sighting. They see this thing once, and that's and that's it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll save those and do another episode for sure, include it in the next part of this. 
we'll space them out. We learned our lesson with UFOs at wartime. Yeah, yeah. So I'll the next time we cover Mothman, it's going to be covering the uh, the the Chicago flap from 2017 and 18. Um, so that's that's what I'll get into whenever we get around to doing Mothman again. But uh, we'll we'll space it out. It'll it'll probably be a couple months before we we do another Mothman episode, just because there's so much other shit to get into, and I've got a lot of other cool things in the pipeline that I, I want to start researching. Um, so I think we'll put Mothman aside for a bit. We'll get back to him though. Um, but it's, I mean, to me, it's just further evidence that there's weird shit out there, man. And it, and it, and it seems to take place or take a lot of different shapes and forms, but it, it seems to, uh, operate in the same way. And it's it's just kind of like, hey, I'm here, I'm here to scare you. You're you're scared. All right, see ya. Hmm. Like it just like I wonder if these entities use our world as like a a drive through, and they just they're just like, oh, I'm just gonna pop in real quick for a bite to eat, and I'll uh, and I'll I'll meet you at Dave's house later, and we'll we'll hang out. Yeah, I've always and felt so, that all those types of things, it, it's pretty much like a drive through. I'll say, be here like at all times they'd just be <laughs> yeah 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 they're just gonna pop in grab a bite to eat and then go do whatever shit they have to do on their own plane who knows yeah. maybe they're just sick of doing taxes they have to do fucking other world taxes and they're like i'm sick of the other world taxes fuck you <laughs> go to the real world and i'm gonna suck some fear calms them down they can get back to work maybe it's not even maybe it's not even food maybe it's like a drug yeah. Maybe that's like their weed. They they come to our world and they're just like, oh, <coughs> that's the stuff. That's why they fly away so fast. They're like, yep, that's good. Yep. And then they get paranoid and like, see, they're going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Whatcast. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, iTunes, and YouTube. Enjoy the podcast. Get yourself a Whatcast t shirt or a sticker pack. Who was that dude on that one episode? Try the links in Homie's page. All this and more can be found at www.thewattcasters.com. Thanks again for listening and have a great week.